Mark Gibson Humanoids channel. The content to this animation CPA, MBA, CMA, ACPA, ASA, Australia. Enjoy learning! So, good morning class and uh, welcome to your evaluation concepts and methodologies class. Today, I will discuss about asset-based valuation. So this, is, this will cover chapters two and three of our uh, reference material. Of course, to start with, let's define what an asset is. So um, as of January 2020, uh, there's a latest or the revised conceptual framework and accounting standards, no? which defines an asset as an economic resource controlled by an entity as a result of past event. So class, no? siguro ang, ang uh, tip as early as now is if you have used previous version of conceptual, of conceptual framework and accounting standards, eh merong revision nga, no? Beginning January 2020, no? Including the definition of asset, no? So right now, the definition of an asset, it is, is, it is an economic resource controlled by an entity as a result of past event. In fact, uh, CFAS also defines um, the, what an economic resource is, no? So it is the right that has the potential to produce economic benefits. No? So this is the new definition of assets. Okay, so of course, along the lines of um, asset-based valuation, there's concept called greenfield and brownfield investments. Ano nga ba yung dalawa? Let's compare uh, the concepts of these two uh, categories of investment. No? So sabi natin, uh, when we say greenfield investments, these are, uh, well, investments started from scratch. So, and it also uh, mentioned that it's more challenging to determine the value as these are based on estimates. So simply greenfield, these are startup. No? And then, of course, uh, when we speak of brownfield, these are partially or fully operational and are already in the going concern business opportunities. Therefore, those uh, investments categorized as brownfield investments, ito na yung, uh, may, may, they, they have their own set of um, financial statements. So therefore, uh, there will be basis for devaluation. No? Kasi nga, uh, they, they are already established. So meaning to say, meron na tayong uh, trends no, that we can, uh, based upon. No? So that's greenfield and brownfield uh, investments. Now, uh, syempre, no? every time we uh, invest in a company, uh, there's always embedded risk involved. No? Now, to mitigate those uh, risks, meron tayong yung tinatawag na enterprise-wide uh, risk management. No? In fact, class, no? so dun sa mga uh, entities listed in uh, in the stock exchange risk um, committee is required to be uh, set up within the company. No, so ano ba yung usually ginagawa ng risk committee and ano ba yung importance to have uh, risk management? So number one, it increases the opportunities. It facilitates management and identifies the risk factors that affect the business, it identifies and creates cost-efficient opportunities, it manages performance viability, and uh, it improves management and distribution of resources across the enterprise and makes the business more resilient to abrupt changes. Now, simply, class, uh, of course, when sabi kasi diba natin, in, in every undertaking, uh, there's always risk involved no so uh, in in managing risk syempre uh, it's good that if we have a dedicated committee focusing on the risk no as syempre di ba pag sinabi naman nating risk uh, it could be uh, from outside or within the, the company no so we have to manage all those risks no in order for us to uh, be able to sustain our business operations so that's risk management now, in asset-based uh, 
asset-based valuation. In fact, we have four popular methods to determine the value of assets. No? So we are going to uh, discuss all four methods. And that's the reason why liquidation uh, valuation method is also covered in this discussion. No? It, well, it's <clears throat> true that it will be covered in Chapter 3. So at least no, to have a full understanding or full concept of all the asset-based valuation. So we'll also co cover uh, that portion in this uh, session. So like uh, our previous uh, discussions, gagawin nating approach is I'll discuss all the theoretical part and then later on, we'll proceed with discussion problems no? so, so that will um, strengthen no, the understanding. Of course, uh, what I encourage you to do is read through the reference material at least no yung mga examples in the reference material will be um, supplemental no uh, in in the learning process no so let's have um, book value method so book value can be uh, defined as the value recorded in the accounting records of a company so in here, assets and liabilities are categorized into current and non-current assets. So what I'm going to do, class, is uh, I'll also be sharing a. We'll also be sharing the recording for the statement of uh, uh, company's uh, position, no? So that you'll also be able to have a full understanding of assets and liabilities. No? So that's uh, part of my assignment. No? So I'll be also sharing you the link uh, uh, to cover that uh, discussion. No? So, but basically, class, no? so when we say uh, current assets, these are those expected to be realized within the company's normal operating cycle or to be realized within 12 months after these transactions were reported or held primarily for the purpose of uh, trading. No? Of course, we have the cash and cash equivalents. Uh, and then uh, on the other hand, non-current naman, uh, ito yung mga uh, assets wherein benefits can be realized in more than 12 months. Okay? And uh, of course, no. so to complete the full picture in terms of liabilities, current liabilities are expected to be settled within the entity's normal operating cycle or within 12 months. No? So usually they, these are held for the purpose of trading. And of course, no. so those items that do not fall under this category will fall under non-current liabilities. No? So palagi naman ganun, eh, no? residual usually yung uh, non-current category. No? Okay, so let's talk about the net book value of assets. No? So when we say net book value, this is the value of the enterprise based on the book value of the assets less all non-equity claims against it. No? Or simply, this formula, net book value of assets is equal to total assets less total liabilities over the number of outstanding shares. No? So like I said, we'll cover this more uh, a little later when we go to the uh, different discussion problems that I have prepared for this session. Of course, uh, in using the book value method, we have, well, advantages and disadvantages. So pag-usapan muna natin ano ba yung mga advantages of uh, using book value method. So sabi natin, it is more transparent. Transparent in such a way that uh, usually the book value is the purchase purchase price. Eh, no? So we can, um, uh, it is it is transparent, transparent and at the same time, it can be verified no? by means of looking into uh, different documentations. No? However, uh, in using the book value method, uh, it reflects historical value. No? So therefore, it may not be reflective of what its true value is. No? So yun yung downside of using the book value method. Okay, so now let's discuss about the replacement value method. So this is the second um, most common asset-based valuation. 
Uh, so when we say replacement cost, it's the cost of similar assets that have the nearest equivalent value as of the valuation date. No, So there are factors affecting the replacement value. So number one, age of the asset, size of the asset, and at the same time, uh, the competitive advantage of the asset. No, So class, uh, when we say replacement cost, no, when, and when we use uh, replacement value method, simply, ano ba yung... Um, uh, cost to replace that particular asset. No? Of course, we look into the market. Ano ba yung uh, nearest equivalent value for, for a particular asset? And that's basically the whole concept of replacement value. Now, uh, if we're going to put this into a formula, replace, replacement value per share would be net book value plus or minus replacement adjustments no? over outstanding shares. Okay, so imagine, no? Uh, in in um, book value, uh, we don't actually look into the age of the asset or size, no? So it, at least um, this is in, in replacement value method, no? So sabihin natin na this is um, more or less a... Uh, a more concrete uh, valuation method no? in such a way that it, it compares valuation nearest uh, equivalent value as of the valuation date. No? So again, later on, we'll discuss this further by uh, uh, looking into the different uh, discussion problems. Okay, so the third uh, valuation approach is the reproduction value method. No? Kailan ba na ginagamit ang reproduction value method? So sabi natin, uh, if there is no valuation uh, available, no? so uh, we use reproduction value method. So sabi natin, reproduction value is simply the estimate of cost of reproducing, creating, developing, or manufacturing a similar asset. So sabi natin na uh, we use reproduction value kung wala tayong nakikitang replacement value uh, near or of nearest equivalent no so there are different steps in determining the equity value using a reproduction value method so number 1 we should conduct a reproduction cost analysis on all assets no? so simply uh, we are going to estimate all the processes no in order to recreate that particular uh, asset no number two adjust the book value to reproduction cost values and then uh, finally we apply the rep re the replacement value using the uh, figures calculated in the preceding step no okay and finally we have this liquidation value method so it considers the salvage value as the value of the asset uh, the value of the company, well, well, liquidation value is simply the value of the company if it were dissolved and its assets are sold individually. So meaning uh, it represents the net amount that can be gathered if the business is shut down and its assets are sold piecemeal. So paano ba yung sinasabi natin piecemeal? No? Kasi plus, um, uh, we are actually talking about liquidation value whenever the business is undergoing say hard times no or uh, it's 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 failing no so therefore we have to account what would be the liquidation value for each uh, type of asset and from there simply magkano ba natin pwedeng ibenta each of this line or each of this asset no so that's liquidation value that's the reason why it's also known as the net asset value. Now, in liquidation value method, there's this element of discounted cash flow. No? So that's why um, I'll also be sharing you uh, with a link to the time value of money uh, discussion. It, it will cover all those uh, concepts. Kailan, ba, kailan, kailan ginagamit ang present value of one? Kailan ginagamit ang present value of one, annuity of one? No? So uh, those concepts are uh, important to have a full 
understanding of liquidation value method. But simply, uh, liquidation value per share is equivalent to the total liquidation value. Again, to calculate the total liquidation value, it is important for you to know and understand the concept of time value of money. Because um, uh, there will be uh, times that you'll be provided with uh, the net cash flows. It could be uh, uniform or not. So there's the element of the uh, time value of money and the discounting, no? discounted cash flow method. So again, liquidation value per share is equal to the total liquidation value over the outstanding shares. And tandaan class, eh? uh, liquidation value considers present value of the sums that can be obtained through disposal of the assets. Net of the sum set aside for the closure cost. So think of this as um, we're now actually uh, closing down the business. Of course, no? hindi naman yan basta makapagsara lang. So there are also still costs involved no, to liquidate the assets. We can well, will be required to hire a liquidator. Will be will be required to hire uh, someone to uh, to verify the valuation that that we use and so on. No, uh, and of course, repayments of debts and other liabilities, or simply all our obligations, net of taxes and cost of you know cost of liquidation. Okay, so what are the situations to consider liquidation value method? I think uh, we've, we've covered this um, earlier, but ito nga, isisay natin. So each time uh, the business is failing, no? so sabi natin, ano ba yung indicator? No? To indicators uh, that we can assume that the uh, business is failing. Sabi natin, uh, a low or negative returns. No? So and consistent operating or operational losses. No? So, sa, paano yan? Uh, consistently, palagi ka na lang loss, net loss. No? So, imagine uh, shareholders won't be happy no? uh, every time you release your financial statements and there's net losses uh, reported. No? Uh, and sabi nga natin, this type of um, indicators may lead to insolvency or even bankruptcy. Huh? Okay, so uh, of course, uh, number two, corporate or project end of life. Paano naman to? So for example, um, Shell, Petron, and, and Chevron, no? so entered into joint venture. So now that joint venture um, is specifically for a given purpose. No? Sabi natin, uh, uh, nagkaroon sila ng joint venture to say create a, uh, a manufacturing plant in Pandakan. Sabi lang natin Pandakan, no? Imagine instead of uh, kasi nga, 'di ba? Uh, pare-parehas lang naman ang, source, ang ang raw materials, raw materials nila. It's the crude oil. What differentiates uh, uh, each of this company would be the additives, no? So, 'di ba? Si Chevron with Tecron. Si Shell naman, V-Power. Si Petron, I can't remember ano ba yung additives ni, ni V-Power. Pero what I'm, I'm telling you is this joint venture organized by these three biggest uh, uh, oil companies, actually they, they reduce cost no? by entering into this type of joint venture. No? So uh, imagine, sabi natin, di ba, isa lang raw materials, crude oil. And yet, tatlo sila tatlong company gagawa ng kanya-kanyang manufacturing plant no so um, it's not cost efficient so kaya nga nagkakaroon sila ng mga joint venture instead of setting up their uh, three different manufacturing plants so gagawa lang sila ng isa doon doon ipo-process yung raw materials which is the crude oil and then kanya-kanya na silang ano uh, further processing no so ganun ganun usually ganun usually nangyayari uh, in oil uh, oil industry now talking about corporate or project end of life so sa, for example uh, these three uh, companies decided to end the joint venture then liquidation value method comes in no and uh, finally, depletion of scarce resources. So, paano yan? Uh, in terms of mining, no? 
So kung uh, for example, syempre 'di ba, pag mining naman, they, they just um uh, excavate, no? So kuha lang ng mga minerals, eh paano pag naubos na doon sa particular uh, location na 'yon, no? So that's the time they include liquidation value method, no? Kasi nga wala na makuha, so they have to close down that particular site, no? And that that usually happens uh, in the mining industry kaya nga nagkakaroon tayo ng mga problems uh, in terms of uh, uh, society no yung of course environment uh, issues all right so that's liquidation value method no i'm not sure what's happening no but uh, let's proceed with discussion problems no so let's have problem number one. Okay, so we'll proceed with uh, the different uh, discussion problems. No, so let's have problem number one. Let me read the uh, requirements first. Book value as of December thirty one, twenty nineteen. Number two, book value per share as of December 2019. Number three, book value as of December 2020. And finally, book value per share as of December 31, 2020. The balance sheet of Piolo Company as of December 31 is presented below. So you have your total assets and total liabilities and shareholders' equity. Ordinary shares has par value of 1 peso per share. In April 1, 2020, Piolo Company issued additional shares as part of its funding plan. So let's have uh, problem number one. Okay, so in problem number one class, ang requirement lang naman sa atin is book value. Of course, paano ba natin sinasolve yung book value? We have total assets. Uh, we'll we'll proceed with uh, requirement number one. Huh? So total assets of uh, 2019, that's 490,000 given naman yan. Less total liabilities of 20, uh, December 2019, 170,000. So that's 35,000 accounts payable. Short-term notes payable of 50,000 plus bonds payable of 85,000. No? So that's 170,000. Now, get the difference. The book value as of December 2019 is 320,000 pesos. Okay. Now, next requirement is to compute for the book value per share. Again, this is not a new concept to you. We have discussed this a number of times. No? Uh, also, uh, during the discussion of financial statement analysis, book value per share is also uh, captured. No? So book value as of December 2019, we have, uh, we have uh, calculated that earlier. So that's 320,000 divided by the weighted average outstanding shares. So, paano yun? As of 2019, there's, there are no movement naman in the, uh, share, in the uh, shareholders' equity. No? So, that's 200,000 pesos uh, divided by the par value of 1 no? para makuha natin yung 200,000 shares. No? So, 320,000 over 200,000 shares. So, that's 1.60. That's your book value per share for 2019. Okay, now let's go to requirement number three. So total assets as of December 2020 is 545,000. O class, given naman yan. Less total liabilities, so 45,000 for accounts payable plus short-term notes payable of 50,000 plus bonds payable of 75,000 total of 170,000 pesos. Get the difference now. You can ha you can calculate for the book value as of December thirty one twenty twenty. That's amounting to three hundred seventy five thousand pesos. So ganon ka simple yung book value method class, no? Now of course, um, 
Finally, number four, book value per share as of December 31, 2020. And in here, uh, basahin natin yung uh, last sentence. No? In, April, in April 1, 2020, uh, Piolo Company issued additional shares as part of its funding plan. Okay. So, of course, um, with the issuance of additional shares, we have to compute the weighted average outstanding shares. So, paano yan? Pag-usapan natin paano yung pag-compute ng uh, weighted average outstanding shares. Okay. So, ordinary shares, January to March. 200,000. So, yan naman eh, given, no? Kasi kailan ba tayo nagkaroon ng issuance of additional shares? April. So, nung April, magkano na yung value nung equity natin? So, 225,000, no? Kaya nagkaroon ng increase. So, number of months involved, so 3 months, January, Feb, and March. And then yung remainder, 9 months, no? This is for 2020 class, ha? So, uh, we multiply 200,000 multiplied by 3, 600,000. 225,000 multiplied by 9, that's 2,025,000. Get the sum, so that's 2,625,000. Divide by uh, 12, so that's 218,750. That's the weighted average of outstanding shares. Okay, so with that, pwede na natin compute yung Requirement number four. So in requirement number four, uh, we are being asked to compute for the book value per share for as of December 2020. So book value as of December 2020, na compute natin kanina, that's 375,000. Divide by the weighted average of outstanding shares of 218,750. So yun yung kinumpute natin. So the book value per share as of December 31, 2020 is 1.71. Okay? So that's problem number one. Now, uh, problem number two, compute for the following. So number one, book value of Piolo Company. Number two, replacement cost of property, plant, and equipment. And number three, replacement value of Piolo Company. So the balance sheet of Piolo Company is presented below. So you have your total assets and total liabilities and shareholders' equity. The owners of Piolo Company is looking at how much they can sell the company. They are assessing how much is the range of the fair value based on the company assets. A third-party appraisal was made for the property, plant, and equipment, which resulted with the following findings. Property and buildings with book value of 1 million has market value of 1,500,000. No, sa tandaan na, ang pinag-usapan lang dito is property and buildings. So merong naiwan, which is the equipment. The remaining portion is for the equipment. Ito na nga which was deemed can be replaced at 80% of its book value. Other assets and liabilities approximate their, their replacement value. So meaning, uh, yun daw book value is equivalent to the replacement values for the other assets. No? Okay, so let's have problem number two. Okay, so book value. So ito naman, uh, uh, Ito na yung palagi natin na pinag-uusapan. No? So, total assets, 3,270,000. That's given. Less total liabilities. So, total liabilities mo is 420 plus 900,000. So, that's 1,320,000. So, get the difference. Total book value as of December 2020 would be 1,950,000 pesos. Okay. So, let's go to requirement number two. Requirement number two, replacement costs of property, plant, and equipment. So, tandaan, itong paragraphs below kasi, uh, the, uh, this talk about the property, plant, and equipment. So, sabi nung una, uh, third-party appraisal was made for property, plant, and equipment. Yung property and buildings with book value of 1 million, given yan class, has market value of 1,500,000. So, the market value here 
is the replacement value. So remember, class, di ba? Sabi natin kanina, replacement value, this is an indicator of similar asset, no? Uh, yung near uh, near equivalent. No? So that's 1,500,000. Now for the equipment, another uh, the same third-party appraisal, sabi 80% lang daw ang replaced value niyan of the book value. So meron tayong book value of 1,350,000. Paano nakuha? So ang total property plant equipment natin is 2,350,000. Sabi dyan, 1 million is property and buildings. So meaning property and plant. No? So yun ay E1 is the equipment portion. No? So that's 1,350,000. And sabi, on replacement value down ng equipment is only equivalent to 80% of its book value. So 1,350,000 multiplied by 80%. So that's 1,080,000 pesos. So get the sum. The total replacement cost would be 2,580,000 pesos. No? So that's requirement number two. Now, for requirement number three, ang pinag-uusapan naman natin dito is yung total replacement value for the, the, the company, no? for Piolo Company. So na, dahil na-compute na natin yung uh, replacement value for property, plant, and equipment, Ibaba na lang natin. No? So, 2,580,000 plus other assets. No? Sabi natin, other assets and liabilities approximate their replacement value. So, meaning the, the, the book value is equivalent to the replacement value. So, therefore, yung remainder. No? So, total assets natin is 3,270,000 less the um, book value of, PEEP of the property, plant, and equipment. So, remainder is 920,000. Get the sum para makuha mo yung replacement value of the assets. No? So, that's 3,500,000. Less the liabilities. Magkano yung liabilities natin? 1,320,000 or uh, 420,000 for accounts payable plus long-term bonds payable of 900,000. So get the difference. So 3,500,000 less 1,320,000, your replacement value would be 2,180,000 pesos. No? That's a requirement number three. Okay, so I hope nakakasunod pa. Uh, let's go now to problem number three. So in problem number three, we'll cover book value again and reproduction cost this time. No? So sabi natin, no, uh, we use reproduction cost method if replacement cost isn't available. No? So therefore, kung walang similar assets, uh, we have now uh, to calculate it based on cost analysis. No? Kasi nga, gagawin natin siya. Eh, no? ang, ang downside lang nito is... Uh, Ang downside of using uh, reproduction cost is uh, very limited uh, data. And so um, we can't actually compare it with other, other uh, sources. No? Unlike kasi kung, kung replacement value method ang ginagamit natin, there's this um, element of third-party uh, assessor no? so that, that, that will provide us with replacement value. Again, in reproduction cost, sabi, di ba, kasi natin, di ba, step number one is to assess the uh, or, or come up with a cost analysis of all the processes involved in creating a particular asset. No? So let's have discussion problem number three. Compute for the following requirements uh, number requirement number one book value of Piolo Company number two reproduction cost of intangible asset and number three reproduction value of Piolo Company so simply in number three we're now calculating the reproduction value for the entire uh, company no? okay so let's have problem number three the balance sheet of Piolo Company is presented below. You have your total assets, total liabilities, and shareholders' equity. The intangible assets, a patent to a new auditory technology, is self-developed three years ago. So the fact that it's self-developed, uh, there's still a patent. No? So kung may patent yan, hindi basta-basta pwede kopyahin yan. At kung hindi basta-basta pwede kopyahin, 
Ergo, wala kang ibang source no to calculate the replacement value. At dahil wala kang source to get the replacement value, we'll go now to reproduction cost method. No? So yun lang naman yun. An investor is looking at buying the company and Piolo Company would like to give an initial quotation. So bala ko lang bilihin. No? Since the technology is unique and does not have any comparables, the software development team quoted that the cost of reproducing the intangible asset is at 120% of its net asset cost. Okay, so let's have problem number three. All right. So, pag-usapan muna natin requirement number one, book value. So, total assets of 2,550,000, that's given. Less total liabilities. Total liabilities is... 400,000. So that's accounts payable plus short-term notes payable of 200,000. All right. So get the difference. So you'll arrive with the book value of 2,150,000. Ito, pag-usapan na natin yung reproduction cost. Sabi natin, uh, intangible assets book value is equivalent to 500,000 ayun plus given naman yun no? multiply by the reproduction cost percentage and sabi dyan uh, it was quoted that the cost of reproducing intangible asset is at 120% of its net asset cost no? so uh, reproduction cost percentage would be 120% so therefore intangible assets reproduction cost would be 600,000 pesos no so okay na tayo dyan. okay so let's have uh, requirement number 3 so in requirement number 3 we'll compute for the total reproduction value of piolo company no so this time class uh, we have already calculated for the uh, reproduction cost of intangible assets. No? So that's 600,000. So we have total assets less the uh, book value of the uh, intangible assets. So that's 2,550,000. So paano yun? 2,550,000 less uh, book value of intangible assets of 500,000. So the remainder... Uh, would be 2,050,000. So 2,050,000 plus 600,000, that's your total assets reproduction cost. Less the liabilities of 400,000, so that the reproduction value would be 2,550,000 pesos. No? So that's uh, problem number three on reproduction value. Okay. Okay, so let's now go to problem number four. Okay, so in problem number four, uh, which company under consideration has the highest economic value added? And letter B, which companies would you recommend for investment? And finally, letter C, what is the economic value added of each company under consideration? So you have been asked by Piolo Company to compute for the economic value added of the companies he is considering to invest into as follows. So given our uh, E-Corporation, V and A Corporation with their net investments, weighted average cost of capital, and net operating profit after tax. No? So let's have problem number uh, four. Okay. Okay, so problem number four. So, well, ano mga buwan ba yung formula natin to get economic value added? No? So, that's net operating profit after tax less capital invested multiplied by the weighted average cost of capital. No? So, uh, so, I, I, I plot ko lang lahat ng given. No? So for uh, corporations E, V, and A, net investments are 55 million, 60 million, and 70 million respectively. Given pa lang to, ha? wala pa akong ginagawang analysis. No? So 8%, 9%, and 10% for the weighted average cost of capital. 
And finally, the net operating profit after tax, 4,550,000 for company A, E, 5,450,000 for company B, and 6,850,000 for company A. Now, let's proceed with the economic value added. No? So, sabi natin, net operating profit after tax given, so that's 4,550,000, 5,450,000 and 6,850,000 respectively. Less capital invested multiplied by weighted average cap cost of capital. So that's 55 million multiplied by 8%. So that's 4,400,000 for uh, E Corporation. 60 million multiplied by 9%. So that's 5,400,000 for V Corporation. And finally, 70 million multiplied by 10%. So that's 7 million pesos for uh, Corporation A. Okay. So let's get the difference. 4,550,000 less 4,400,000. So that's 150,000 for uh, E Corporation. 5,450,000 less 5,400,000. So we get 50,000. This is for cor Corporation V. And finally, 688, 6,850,000 less 700 mil, 7 million. So minus 150,000 for A Corporation. Okay. Now that we have calculated the economic value added, let's now... Uh, go through the requirements. So which company under consideration has the highest EVA? So the answer is Corporation E. Okay. Which companies would you recommend for investment? So uh, if we're only given this type of problem to solve, no? so without any other uh, information, uh, of course, we have to choose the highest EVA or so long that it's giving us a positive EVA. You know? So the answer to question or to requirement B is corporations E and B you know? because they have positive EVA. All right. And, and let us see what is the EVA of each company under consideration. So that's 150,000 for corporation E. 50,000 for Corporation V and minus 150,000 for Corporation A. So that's problem number four. Okay, so let's have problem number five on liquidation value. So at year end, Piolo Company balance sheet showed total assets of 50 million, total liabilities of 30 million, and 500,000 shares of ordinary shares outstanding. If Piolo could sell its assets for 40 million, Piolo's liquidation value per share of ordinary share is. So let's find out. Okay, so makana daw yung assets natin. Assets is 50 million. Liabilities is 30 million. And ordinary shares of 500,000. So sabi natin yung asset daw can be sold um, by 40 million. No? So this is uh, 40 million. Now, paano natin compute yung liquidation value? So liquidation value is simply yung um, market price no? of 40 million less 30 million na li liabilities. That's the liquidation value. Divide by the total outstanding shares. No? So in that case, 500,000. So the liquidation value per share would be 10 million divided by 500,000 or 20 pesos. No? So that's problem number five. Oops. Okay, so that ends our uh, discussion or my discussion on the... Uh, asset-based valuation. So if you have any questions, please feel free to send me a note. Uh, here's my email address. So thank you again for attending my class and thanks for attentively listening. So stay safe. Goodbye.
This has been your instructor, Mark Gibson. Thank you for learning with us. See you in our next discussion. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya!